I mean, here goes nothing. Wait, where do I, where should you want me to stand? Just take a video of that. Oh god, what if it explodes? It's not gonna explode. My name is Alex. Today is the start of the fourth week for social distancing, stay at home order in California for the COVID-19 uh, issue that we're having as in, around the world. As such, because I've been staying at home, I've had a lot of more time to finish projects that I hadn't taken care of before, but also I have more time to learn how to do new things. And uh, one of those was doing maintenance on the Jeep. Now, yesterday was Easter Sunday here. And uh, we had rain all day. It's been actually quite rainy for the last month. It's been gloomy. The weather hasn't been great. So I thought that that was a good time for me to talk to my brother, Jose, who is a high-performance car mechanic, about changing the oil in the Jeep and, you know, some of the common questions that I have about viscosity and things like that that I wanted to understand. So this video is me and Jose talking about that and also doing a very basic oil change on the car. We'll go step by step with what does that look like for the Jeep Wrangler. So let's go and see. Okay, so let's see, let me let me start. I've had somebody else the change in the uh, in the um, in the in the oil for the last uh, couple of cycles. I've been doing it every five thousand miles. Why is that so important in a vehicle like mine? In your particular case since you do a bunch of off-roading it's going to be really beneficial for you to definitely keep a shorter interval because um you're going to be putting a lot of load on your on your on your jeep and things like that and not to mention with all the dirt and things it's just it's really advisable that you keep your interval shorter than the probably ten thousand miles that they're going to recommend at the dealer what other things should I be looking at in my maintenance of, of, of my vehicle and the way that I have it set up? What do you, what do you think are f key things that I should look after and, uh, and have a, a regular maintenance interval to make sure that this Jeep keeps going for a lot long? The most important part is going to be oil. So it, as long as you change your oil at regular intervals, oil really and truly is the life of the engine. So make sure that you do that. Um, apart from that, you know, just keep um, keep the maintenance schedule handy for the for the Jeep, and make sure you keep up with it. So, uh, you know, be it the air filter or spark plugs and things like that. And then, of course, if you do decide to soup it up, like putting a, a blower or something like that, then you have to then you'll have to pay special attention to other things like using colder plugs and things like that. But we're not we're not quite there there. We're not quite there with you, so we'll work our way there. And you were very specific about 
um, you know, choosing a particular filter. Why did you do that, and why, what's the importance of? Uh, what are the pitfalls of going cheap with a filter and oil and things like that? What kind of things do you recommend, and what kind of thing, what kind of things should I look after when I go and purchase parts to do an oil change? It's just a matter of picking good quality parts. So the filter, right, is what is the sole thing that's gonna really ensure that particulates that are circling around your engine get get stopped. And the thing is, if you purchase a low quality filter, there's a they're missing certain features. They'll have less creases in their oil filter, so they their their capacity for filtering is reduced. And also, the material that they use is inferior. So I've seen I've seen analysis where they've taken a bunch of different brands of filters and torn them apart and studied them. And that's where you can see where a good quality filter, such as a Bosch or a Mobile One or a MAN filter, which is what I use on Audis and Volkswagens and BMWs, um, they're all going to be great quality filters as opposed to, for example, choosing a Fram. So Fram is something that's wildly sold everywhere. You see it on a bunch of cars, but it's actually a junk filter that I would never, ever, ever recommend anybody to use. So the oil for my car is recommended to be 5w20 could you explain yeah. to us what that means so that what it is is viscosity so so that's the oil viscosity and and how how well it works within a temperature range and so um usually the higher the numbers the the better the the more the thicker the oil is, okay? So if you have a zero weight oil, so like zero W20, it's gonna work, it's gonna be runnier in colder temperatures, which is gonna allow you to um, be able to start using, you know, get a better start in during cold winter climates and things like that. Whereas um, if you have a car that's only gonna be in summer climates or in really hot climates, so then they might they might be better off with like a 5w20 instead of a 0w20 because they don't need that low viscosity and for example actually in your jeep it's an option you can either do 0w20 or 5w20 um, then you get cars like our higher performance okay where the combustion chambers run hotter and so a thinner oil like a 0w20 or something like that won't work on a car like that because the the way that it's designed the ring gap and things like that you'll you'll burn that oil it seeps through too easily for example a race car tends to run a thicker oil and in a car like that the problem with running really thick oil like say a 20w50 and stuff like that is that you could literally damage the engine if you run too hard cold because the oil doesn't flow as freely as it would if you're running a zero w20 sorry that was probably overly complicated answer but there you have it but what we did for the for the jeep is uh we determined that the jeep needs uh six quarts of oil so we got mm -hmm. this uh package uh to get the six quarts of oil which is the right oil this is the oil that actually uh the viscosity that uh Chrysler or Jeep recommends. Um, you yes. also asked me to get a high, high quality uh, filter. I was able to get a Mobile One filter, which apparently is like middle of the line, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty decent, yes. It's pretty decent filter to it. Uh, we got a funnel to put the oil in. And very important is we've got something to get the oil out <laughs> because we can't yes. just dump the oil anywhere we have to process it and, and dispose it in the right manner so with that in mind Jose what do I do first so um, the first thing I would do is organize myself right so get all the necessary tools that you'll need I think I told you you would need a 24 millimeter socket uh, for removing the oil filter you'll need um, I'd have to take a look what I sent you but you'll need uh, you'll need a, a wrench to be able to take off the oil drain plug so you want to organize yourself have all those things ready you also want to have some rags handy um, and j just set yourself up to get down get down to it, it overall it's not a really hard job and um, as long as you're prepared ahead of time it goes by quick and smooth That came up pretty easy. 
All right, Ma Megan, I'm putting gloves. I see that. Because we gotta keep him clean. Keep coronavirus. Keep, well, the car doesn't have coronavirus. We don't know that. This is true. And we gotta unscrew, unscrew, unscrew the container and make sure that the actually drain plug. The top one, not the drain plug on the side, the top one. The, the top one mm -hmm. is, um, is actually available so that the air comes out as the oil goes into the, into the pan. And one of the things that Jose said before is that when you put this container down underneath the oil pan and you're going to unscrew the drain plug to position it in a, in a location where the, the initial flow, which is going to come with a bit of pressure, is actually going to hit this and not necessarily right underneath the pan, uh, which obviously the oil will be when there's less oil on the pan. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to take our, third, our 13 millimeter socket and wrench and we're going to, um, and going to go down underneath the, the Jeep, position this and open that drain to drain the oil that's um, in the pan. Do, do one thing also before you do that. Uh, just loosen your your oil filler cap, just loosen it. And the reason you want to do that is that way uh, air flows through in there. But just uh, don't take it off completely, just loosen it. It's going to let air flow and then your oil is going to drain down uh, smoother and faster. Get down there with the drain plug. You have gloves on, you have your 13 millimeter, and then bring either a paper towel or some sort of rag that you're gonna use. Ready? Yes. Let's go. Here's the 13 millimeter bolt. That's the oil drain plug on the oil panel of the uh, Jeep. Here's the 13 millimeter drag, and it's as simple as. as uh, yeah, here we go. Don't, 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 don't get that way. <laughs> Okay, and then that's all done. It should be pretty easy now to just go ahead and take that out, and the oil's gonna start seeping out of there in just a second. There it oh. is. Well, it's all over your gloves now. What's that? <gasps> Whoa. Okay, so there's the oil coming out. It'll be doing it for a little bit, so if you want to, you can even step out of there if you want to now. Jose, what is next? <laughs> yeah, you see that right here? Like that? Yeah. Yeah, so that's where the filter's at, and that's a 20, th this plastic thing is a 24 millimeter socket, which is what I put in here, and then we're going to loosen it a little bit. Okay, just to make sure it's not going to drain a bunch of oil. Okay, it doesn't look like it is, Jose, so am I going to take it all out? Yeah, you can just take it out. What now? Do we yeah. put do we put the new oil filter on? Yeah, so you can go ahead and do that. So when you look in the box for the oil filter, my guess is that you're gonna see at least one gasket, if not a gasket and a washer. Well, let's have a look. There is a gasket. Yes. Okay. So you'll notice in your oil filter cap that you took off that it's gonna have a rubber gasket around it and you'll wanna take that gasket off and then replace it with the one that was supplied. Usually a pick will work for that. Okay, I see this. Screwdriver. Yeah, or in this case, my nails. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Put this outside too. Do not do this, kids. That's not the rule for the environment. Yeah. Probably. Okay, so then just put this, the, just put the gasket on. Yeah. So slip the gasket back on to replace you have the other one. Sure. And then what you want to do is just get a little bit of oil to be right there from the cap if you want to, and just lubricate that rubber gasket. Yeah, there's plenty of oil there. Yeah, so you just want a little bit of it so that way 
it doesn't bind, the, the gasket doesn't bind anywhere. Okay. And just put the gasket all the way to the top of the cap. There's a groove there. Like once you replace the oil, I mean the filter and stuff, then you can just go ahead and screw it back on like normal time it. The, the actual spec is uh, 18 foot pounds. So, I mean, it's not going to be very tight, so don't go all gorilla on it. Well, I have a I have a torque wrench. I can do it with that, but that's fine. It probably doesn't go to 18 foot pounds. You need a 3 8 inch. I have a 3 8. That's what I'm using. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, okay, so we we go ahead and replace that um, gasket right here, and there is a groove in the cup in the cap filter where that gasket goes. So I go ahead and put it in there. Now I'm just gonna wipe it. I'm gonna wipe the outside of it clean. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the gonna go ahead and put the back the filter on, and so you can see here it has sort of a nipple protrusion on this side, but in there there is a housing that obviously fits right in there into the filter. So we're gonna go ahead and put it. In, in there, and then we're gonna go into the back in the Jeep and put it back on. You get it? Yeah. And so, by the way, when you put that drain plug back, it's also really soft, it's 20 foot pounds. <laughs> So you've got that torqued. If you tighten the oil, the oil filter housing also on the top, then you should be ready to start filling up the oil. Let's go ahead and put this funnel up. Okay, we're just gonna take that out and keep it there. And we're going to replace that with a fill uh, this funnel. Here comes the five first five ports. You step out a little bit. So what I would probably do is I would fill, I would put the first five in and then I would check the dipstick and then go from there. I'm sure it'll take all six, but just to be safe. Let's check to see what the oil level says. Push the last quart in. You see it there, that's shiny all the way up to here. Yes. Yeah, that means that we have a full pan of oil, so we're all good. You know, that's it. You should be you should be pretty good to go. You should be able to button it all up, put the cover back on, and go ahead and start it up. Let's put the cap on. Okay. The hardest part of this whole thing is going to be putting this cowl back on. <laughs> Yeah, the cover. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the trickiest part. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see underneath. There's no oil leaking from underneath. I can see it. You're good, because I'm. I've had that view the whole time. <laughs> the used oil right there. All right, so we start it up and see what happens. Yeah, so cap is on, cover's on, oil filter's tight, correct? Oh God, what if it explodes? <laughs> it's You can t put some tape like on your door or something on your door jam that says the mileage of your next oil change okay so apparently then you have a um, you have your oil change or oil life um, setting that now needs to be reset so to uh, reset the oil life uh, remaining meter all you gotta do is turn the ignition uh, to the on position, press and release the gas pedal three times within 10 seconds of turning the ignition on, and it'll reset. Uno, dos, tres. Yeah, it's not that bad, is it? And that was it. Still plenty of daylight to play around in the garage with Megan and her silly shoes. The whole event took less than an hour from startup to finishing up and cleaning up. 
It actually took a lot more time to edit this video than to do the oil change. But I hope it was worth it and it inspires you to do your own maintenance and to do something else or try something else in your Jeep. I know that when I watch YouTube videos from other of my favorite channels, that's what inspires me to try something new. I hope you've enjoyed this video and so please subscribe and leave me your comments below about my new uh, editing bits and pieces. Okay, so long. <laughs> Where are the good old days? <laughs> I'm still I, having a huge nose. It, no, it's no, I've always had a huge nose. This is, oh my god, look at my eyes. Tiny lips. What is the point of this? I don't know. Megan, you, if you want to say something, might as well jump in here and say something. I just want to say thank you. Hold on. For watching. No, wait, let me sit right here. Let's Hold see. on. Right. Come in here. Right. No, you can't. You got to come in here. I just want to say thank you for taking some time out of your day to watch that video because I know a lot of it was weird because you're gonna look at this video. <laughs> it's huge boomers. I'm sorry that you have to look at that. Period. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to help so you get money. If you like money and I need more of it and I don't have enough of it. So, anyway, thank you. Period. That's all I want to say. Megan, out. <laughs> There's that.